I understand uh, many people have traveled to go and cast their votes come Tuesday. It is a good discipline because as the country Kenya, we have leaders that govern the government, the government that serves us and the government that provides leadership for us. And we the citizens do the choosing. Amen? And uh, I want to encourage all of us, if you haven't made a decision to cast your vote, do the decision. Cast your vote. It is important. Amen? You have a say in the way governance is done. And that is by exercising your right to vote. So if you haven't listened to the manifestos of the presidential aspirants and also other leaders on various levels, you have today and you have tomorrow, and as well Tuesday, depending on what time you've chosen to go vote, to listen to what they have to bring on the table. And after you have listened, then you can make an informed choice, an informed choice, an informed decision. And I want to encourage you, especially you that are submitted here, choose what time you will cast your vote. Then go prepared, cast your vote. That is the biggest noise you can make. And afterward, go home and rest. In the evening, come here and we have fellowship. Praise God. Our services will go on uninterrupted. So for those of you that usually come for our lunch hour, we shall have our lunch hour. Amen. For those of you that usually come around for our, our uh, Tuesday fellowship, we shall have our Tuesday fellowship starting at 5. Amen. But I encourage every one of us, make a point, go cast your vote. That is very important. Praise God. You know, because God does not impose leaders on us, but we have a say even by exercising our right to vote. I had to put that through because it was important. Someone bring me my phone from behind there. Amen. Now I'm done with politics. Let's study the word. Bibles, notebooks, and pens. Glory, glory. Last week we saw that Jesus, with all his goodness, with all his splendor, he was rejected by many. Praise God. So people don't reject things because they are bad. People reject things because of who they are. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I said that it doesn't matter how impressive you are some will not see you as helpful. Actually, some will be very quick to dismiss you. Some will be very quick to write you off because they know a certain history about you. In the book of Mark chapter 6, in verse 3, his own village mates, his own people started asking, is this not the carpenter? the son of Mary and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us. So they were offended at him. They were offended because they knew him. They were offended because they knew him and they're like, that one should be on our level. That one should be like us. He should be speaking like us. 
He cannot be using such wisdom. Such wonderful things cannot be coming out of such a person. They should come out of someone like maybe those big people. So it is not that Jesus was doing unworthy things, but they didn't want those beautiful things to come from one of them. They wanted beautiful things to come from another person, maybe of a different level, maybe of a different, uh, maybe of a different life, maybe of a different status in their social gatherings. So they were offended at him. The offense didn't, become, didn't come because of him being bad. It came because they knew him. So always watch out so much whether you are offended at someone and when you are offended, ask yourself, why is this offense? Is it because ni memzoea huyu mtu sana ama it's important. But today, for those of you that love writing topics or subtopics, we are continuing with our study on the man, our savior, Jesus Christ. Today we want to see in the face of rejection. I know many people have been told that you know they have the spirit of rejection. But that is not true. Because as the believer, scripture says that we have not received the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have not received the spirit of fear that we may be taken back into bondage but we have received the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what spirit do you have? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you have the spirit of rejection? So it means no preacher can tell you a believer that upon you is a spirit of rejection. Unless the spirit of Christ is the spirit of rejection, which we obviously know is not true. Some things, because they stick in the mind of men for so long, they want to think that those are spirits. No. Those are thoughts that you've harbored. And so you think that they are your description. The spirit that you've received is the spirit which is of power. It is the spirit which is of love. And it is the spirit which is of a sound mind. Praise God. Now, our subtopic today is in the face of rejection because we are studying an example. This man, our savior, Jesus Christ, how did he handle situations? Like in the case when men wrote him off, like in the case we were studying in the, in the morning as uh, Pastor Nelvin was teaching us, that Nathanael answered Philip in John chapter 1 and verse 46, that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because they're like, ah, that city we know, that village we know, there cannot be anything good. Philip had associated with Jesus for a little while and he had learned something and he purposed from right there. So what did Philip say? Philip said, come and see and we are going to start from there. For Nathanael, he had written Jesus off. Why? Because of the place that he originates from. Sometimes people, when they hear of you, they may get excited, but when they learn a certain detail about you, maybe where you stay, maybe what you do, maybe how much money you have, that alone can cause someone to distance themselves from you. Not because you are bad, but because they have known something that maybe they are like, ah, where do you stay? Langas. Ah. Where does your pastor, how old is your pastor? How, where, what does he do? How much money does he have? What car does he drive? Ah, ah. Do they have drums in their church? 
Do they have bass guitar? Do they which do they do this and this? Okay, who leads their music? Uh, if that is the person, no. Have they ever brought this artist? No, they have never. Huh? And so Nathanael is saying, according to the history that we know about Nazareth, we've never had anything good. Philip is telling, Philip is not trying to contend with him. He's like, you know, today, the very first person, the very, today is the day that you will see that there is something good that cannot come out of there. Philip just tells him, come and see. Because as for Philip, he was persuaded that this man that we have seen is the man of whom the law and the prophets spoke of. That is enough. It doesn't matter if he's coming from Nazareth or, or if he's coming from the middle of Jerusalem. What matters is that he has understood that this man was written about and so if he has come, I need to partake of that that was written about him. Praise God. But even then, eh, Jesus in his ministry, he continues to face rejection. And so I believe we shall not finish all of it today. Nevertheless, we shall start. So Philip en encourages Nathanael to come. And when Nathanael comes, the words that he receives from of Jesus and a one who comes from Nazareth, a place where nothing good had ever been spoken of, speaks things that Nathanael is like, how did you know all of this about me? First, Nathanael is skeptical about anyone coming from Nazareth. But when he hears, he's like, wow. We thank God that Nathanael didn't take offense having heard from someone coming from a less respected place. Praise God. Because we said that the word is not offensive to anyone that is being saved, but to him that is perishing, all they see is offense. Praise God. Now, there is something important in verse 6. That book of Mark. Chapter 6. In verse 6. Because we saw last week that he could not do no mighty work. He could not do any mighty work there. Because he just laid a few hands on a few sick people and healed them. Verse 6 says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about in the villages in a circuit, teaching. If Jesus has been rejected in his own city, any other person is like, even you, my own people that I have grown up with, we have played with, if the house schools we went to school with, and this is your response toward me, yet I have come to give life. Scripture says he went about in the villages teaching. Why? Because his purpose was to fulfill the work of him that had sent him. Not to pay attention that he may be discouraged by him that does not receive him. Next week we are going to see that he speaks to his disciples. He tells them, when they reject you, know that it happened to me first. But now we just want to concentrate on him. His reaction in the face of rejection. What does he say? When many people think they have been rejected, they tend to have that lack of self-esteem. They are like, eh, you know, maybe the same thing that happened to me in the other village, it will happen to me again. So in their approach, in their next, in their tomorrow, they will go with the mindset of today. Yesterday things didn't go well. 
they didn't welcome me. And so, there is a tendency for the hearts of men to be sunken because of what happened yesterday. Scripture says in verse 6, he went about in the villages in a circuit teaching. He was not discouraged by them, them that he knew, and they were like, ah, we know you, we know your sisters are seated among us. What are you telling us? Scripture says he continued. Friends, Jesus knew his role. He knew the end of his calling and he did not listen to them that said, we cannot receive you. Rather, he went about to another village. He left that village, he continued to another village. That is the boldness in the face of rejection. We have a saying in my language saying that goes like, meaning, you can, in a congregation of many, not all of those ten will have the same rejection toward you. Amongst them, some will celebrate you. So when you know that it is not a general thing about you, you will walk with boldness as though no rejection happened yesterday. That is what Jesus did. Did he marvel? Yes. Did he cause his marveling to get hold of him and derail him or pull him back? No, he did not. He continued in power. Praise God. And as I conclude today, later on, you will see that in him, there was always a psych. I know that word has been used uh, badly, especially by when people want to bring entertainment. Psych is just motivation or encouragement. A stirring up. We shall see that in him, there was a stirring up whenever a challenge happened. Praise God. So verse 6 says, he went about continuing. We've been told this morning that you must continue in the things that you have learned, knowing from whom you will, you have learned them. When you continue to chapter 4 of that second Timothy, that is where now he says that you know a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But what you do, you keep on. So when they didn't endure in his native land, he went on to them that would endure his teaching. Praise God. In the face of rejection. Now you can speak about rejection maybe at your workplace. When one employer does not celebrate you, there is another one that is looking at you like you are the very best. Praise God. When one school says you are not good enough for them, there is a school when, which when you go there, they will look at you as the very best in their place. Praise God. When someone does not look at you as a worthy person to be a friend with, there is another one that sees that you are the best friend that they have ever had. So what do you do? You go on with the one that celebrates you as their very best. Because many times people spend a lot of time staying with them that do not celebrate them. You are wasting time on matters that do not matter. Actually, let me say on issues that do not matter. Jesus continued to the villages that would listen to him teaching. Praise God. Because he knew he had a mission. In the book of Luke chapter 9, scripture says Jesus was set for, Naz for not Nazar Nazareth, for, for Jerusalem. Luke chapter 9. Let's start from verse 51. Scripture says, Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Next verse. And sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. He was passing through. His destination was Jerusalem. 
but he was passing through the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. Next verse. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. It means these people maybe wanted to retain him to themselves and they're like, if you are just passing through, then you cannot be of us. Just as men can say, if it is not to my benefit, then we have no relationship. That is how men reject. Men might reject not because you have done bad, but because it is not benefiting them individually. So they are like, if it is not me benefiting out of this, then there cannot be any relationship. Scripture says they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And so the Samaritans rejected him. When his messengers continued in preparation for him, setting for him in the village of the Samaritans, that maybe as he's passing, he might be a blessing to them by teaching and maybe by healing, they, re they did not receive him. They rejected him. They said, no, we cannot associate with you, especially you being a Jew and us being Samaritans. There cannot be an association with you. So they did not receive him. Just as you might also have all the best intentions. Going to witness to someone, preaching for them the, to them the gospel, you have the best intentions. Going to teach someone the word of God, you have the best intentions. Giving someone an opportunity to shine, you have the best intentions. Telling, taking someone out or maybe for anything, you have the best intentions. Connecting someone to a job opportunity, you have the best intentions. Calling someone for fellowship, you have the best intentions. Teaching someone, even when they say, me, I can't associate with the church, you have the best intentions. But do your best intentions always receive the best reception? No. Because your purpose is, is Christ in them, not them by them, but Christ in them. So Jesus was set for a different purpose and they were like, if your purpose is not this, then we cannot associate with you. Next verse. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? It means such, such instances of rejection are actually painful. Such instances of, of, uh, of uh, disappointment are actually painful. You do not know and you wonder. So James and John had all the best reasons for wanting to emulate Elijah when she was sent for kings. And he sent down fire that they were burned, struck dead. So they were like, yeah, when a man of God is not respected, this is the best way to deal with it. Many times, believers, you might see something so ridiculous that you're like, oh, how I wish fire would come and consume this person that is treating the goodness of the knowledge of God in this manner. Many times, that will be your first response. That will be your first, you will say, this, should, this is what should happen. Things can't be like this. And so, James and John, disciples, taught of Jesus. They had Jesus' mind at heart. They had his best interest with him and they're like, you can't reject our master. No. It cannot be like that. But they were wise enough to ask of Jesus, should we call down fire? It means in the inside of them, they wanted really so much what Jesus would say about it. So they're like, should we call down fire? What does Jesus say to them? Next verse. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Let me tell you something. If James and John continued and called down fire to the destruction of the Samaritans that had not received Jesus, 
their noise, their rejection of Jesus would be silenced, but they would be lost. Because they would die in their unbelief. And so that would be detrimental or that would be a negative to the mission that Jesus has. That is why he turns back, he rebukes them and tells them, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. First pause there, don't go to the next verse. I want to tell you why it is important that in the face of rejection, as a believer, you are able to control yourself. And yet not yourself, but the spirit of God that is resident in you does the control of yourself. Praise God. Because many times the rejection can be too much. You've prepared a lot. The disciples, his messengers were running around. And their running around was not recognized by the people for whom Jesus had come. That is painful. In the face of that, it is important that the believer is able to sit control themselves and do not allow the anger or the pain of such rejection to determine their next course of action. What was the inspiration of James and John saying, should we call down fire? This man we know he is for you. And if anyone does not believe, it is destruction. Okay, let's judge you now. But for as long as they are still on earth, let them have the opportunity to hear that, maybe from another person. Praise God. So it is important that you are able to control yourself. We are learning from the man, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He turns and rebukes them. What does it mean? In the face of rejection, it's important that you watch your next course of action. Because your next course of action is descriptive of the manner of spirit that you are of. Praise God. We have seen people that make decisions that later on they will say, I shouldn't have made that decision. Because you are offended in the first place, you make a decision in a rush, and tomorrow, the following day, you look back and be like, did I make this decision? Wasn't there a better decision I should have made? Did I have to speak like this? I pray for you, beloved, that the Spirit of God teaches you how to answer in moments of heat like this, which can, in a way, try to poke your conscience, which may want to poke the way you see things, which may want to poke holes in the way you look at matters. And I pray that as you are instructed in that way, you are able to make the best decisions even in, in the midst of those challenges. Praise God. So, verse 55 has said that he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. The reason why you do not make, you do not award punishments such as what in verse 54 James and John were suggesting is because there is the manner of spirit that you are of. And that is what Jesus was speaking. Jesus was speaking, there is what I am and it is in that that you are that you should be able to respond. Praise God. When we were studying on Thursday, our discipleship Bible class, we learned that Jesus, God in his response, he responds by mercy and by grace. So it is important that in any matter, including matters when you are rejected, in your response, you should respond from the concept of grace, from the concept of mercy, that, it, that regardless of what you, what the other person has done, they will see mercy and grace in your response. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what did Jesus do afterwards? He said in verse 56 that for the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. And they went to another village. 
where we were in Mark chapter 6, verse 6, they went to another village. We are here in verse 56, they went to another village. When there is a rejection in this position, move on to another position. Because that one that has rejected you in their position, it is because they think that is their most comfortable position. You leave them in their position. You go to another position to where your message will be celebrated. That is the attitude with which we move in the spirit and in the manner of spirit that we are of. Jesus himself experienced this. But what did he say first? For the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. I've seen many people that when they are in such situations, they make punishment for others. They condemn others to utter destruction. They make the final judgment on a person. And the life of a person becomes bad because they did not celebrate a minister. The life of a person becomes bad because the minister has cast them. What manner of person would you be if you are the kind that says, because you have not celebrated me, I curse you. Jesus says, I did not come to condemn, but I came to save. So if someone receives the, rejects the salvation that you give, it is not your responsibility to count it on them. What do you do? You go to another village. And that is why Paul, as he's teaching his sons, Timothy, Titus, he tells them, you know, do not be involved in discussions and arguments which bring to no avail. Because by then you will, you will not be able to select your words. You will not be able to sieve your words. And in a lot of argument, you will find yourself making blunders. And later on, you will sit down and be like, I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have done this. I pray for you, beloved, that you will not at any one time reach a situation where you will, if you're sitting down, you will be saying, wow, this was too bad. This was too bad. So how do you achieve that? You continue exercising yourself in the manner of spirit that you are of. And as you continue to exercise yourself in the manner of spirit that you are of, then you eventually learn how to have self-control. Praise God. You learn how to have self-control. So Jesus always is reminded of his purpose. So in verse 56 here he's saying, I remember my purpose. Because if I give, if I judge fire for these people, will they have, will they still have an opportunity for salvation? Because trust me, them that reject you now, later on or tom tomorrow, way later on, they will look back and be like, I shouldn't have rejected such a beautiful message. It is the same thing that happens in Acts chapter 2 all the way through three, when Peter is speaking to them in Jerusalem, they remember that, wow, we crucified this man. We rejected him, and we even wanted to eliminate him. But now we are cut to the heart. What do we do? You know, and that we are going to see next week, Jesus says, when one is doing you bad, Shine good unto them. Because when you do that, you haven't condemned them. You haven't done anything bad. But there is a realization that comes to them eh, that makes them restless to the extent that they be like, I should have done better. But as for you, what did you do? They have nothing to say but alifanya hivi. So that in their in their Coming to the realization, they won't say, Akina ata weo ulifanya hivi wakati milikukata. Are we learning these saints? The manner of spirit that we are of always reminds us the purpose that Jesus came to do. So Jesus reminded himself and said, the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives. So if I set fire on them because they have rejected me, I have destroyed them but to save them. Let them be so that later on they might be able to hear the message. That is why we move on. 
in the face of rejection, move on. You do not go ahead with the rejection saying, Hali nikata, hali nikata, hata huya naiza kata mimi. No. Because then you limit yourself on how effective you are. Because you're looking at the failures of yesterday to be the description of your effectiveness today. The failures are not part of the plan. The plan is to save. So Jesus is like these failures, this rejection. I had good news for the village of Samaria. But if they have rejected me, then it is well. Go to another village. Praise God. I want to ask you a question. In the faith, if, if it was you in this case and you were the head, what do you do? Moving on is healthy because it is important not to be in a place where you are not celebrated. You, 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 you will dry up. Praise God. Even in the world, men want to feel good. Don't you want to feel good? Insecurity is very bad. And so where there is no security, you move away to where there is security. And that is why it is good to be in a place where there is understanding of the purpose of God upon you. Amen. So Jesus tells them that he did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. I want when we look at the life of this man, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we see that his life defines our lives. That even us, when such issues come, when such challenges come, we look back to our God-given mission, our God-given purpose, so that in any way, we shall not be taken away from the purpose that we have. So what does Jesus do? He does not try to keep there trying to convince them because already their mind is set to reject him. Their mind is set to not receive him. The challenge with many believers is they waste and underline that word. If you have a different color pen, write, that in, write this word in that color pen. They waste a lot of time trying to convince them that have utterly made up their minds to reject them. And there are other people that are so ready to listen to them, but they do not give them airtime. They do not give them time because they are trying to win over them that have evidently rejected them. The believer is to go to him that will give ears, not to try to waste time trying to buy out someone that has already made up their mind not to receive them. Praise God. And that is why a church that gives strategies of trying to give entertainment in the sense of trying with the, with, the, with the desire to try to draw men, you are in error. Because Jesus would have tried to do things that entice the Samaritans. But he doesn't do that because that does, it doesn't eternally win men. What means wins men is that men have the readiness to hear. And so Jesus, what does he do? He goes back, he goes to another village. It's very important. In the book of Matthew chapter 24, let's open there, we shall start from verse 40. Let's start from verse 45. Scripture says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is the servant. Paying attention here. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Verse 47. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Let me repeat from verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food 
in due season. What we are seeing here is the master has given a servant a responsibility. when he comes will find him doing exactly that so my prayer for you is in the in the case of rejection even when men do not reject you be avail even when men reject you sorry be available avail yourself to the purpose so jesus is saying the master will be pleased about this servant and many blessings will this servant partake of because when the master comes, he will find him indeed doing what he was instructed to do. Beloved, it doesn't matter the disappointments. Remain on course. Do what you're supposed to do. The, the challenge is many people don't even know what they are supposed to do. But Jesus knew his purpose. And so no matter what happened, he remained true to his purpose. I pray for you, beloved. That by the love of Jesus that is resident in you, no matter the hurdles along the way, you will remain purposed on what the purpose is for you. In Jesus' name, say amen. Now, a purpose on a specific, a person on a specific mission will always face challenges. And among us, those challenges is rejection. People will not see you for your purpose. People will see you for their own desires. People will see you for their own personal things. People will see you for what will their tomorrow be. People will see you for what will their community be. And so the Samaritans only wanted for their community. Scripture says they did not receive him because they, he was destined for Jerusalem. So it's like unless it is for my community, then nothing. So a, papa, a person on a specific mission will always face challenges. Jesus himself faced challenges. But his response, Jesus' response amidst challenges, rejection inclusive. We are, we are studying in the face of rejection. Jesus' response was always to continue with the mission. Jesus' response was always to continue with the mission. In Mark chapter 6, where we see that it is his own hometown. When they rejected him, despite his hometown rejecting him, Jesus did not become less of the son of God that he was. Jesus, even when his own people rejected him, he still was the son of God. So you are not more of a minister because someone has said, yes, you are a minister. You are a minister because Christ is in you. So that the rejection of them that ought to have known you as the perfect minister should not make you feel less of the person that you are. I have said 
in Mark chapter 6 and verse 6, he went to other villages in a circuit, teaching just because he was rejected by his own people, his own hometown. It did not make him less of a son of God. He remained the son of God. Let me tell you something. The way God sees you is so different. He's not seeing you based on how men have welcomed you. Men will always reject you. Men will always look at you as less important. Men will always look at you as useless because of your history, because of your locality, because of what language you speak, because of your possessions, because of your lack, L-A-C-K. But God sees you as his beloved in Christ Jesus. And that is what matters. I want to encourage you saints that you know that and that you become persuaded of that because as you are persuaded of that, you are able to become effective. We have seen in verse 46 of Matthew chapter 24 that blessed is that man whom when the master comes finds him on his work, the work that he was assigned, not being taken about by other things. Many times we are taken about by other things because we want to entice and because we want to impress. You are not here to make an impression. Jesus did not come to make an impression. He came on a mission. He had to remain on course for his mission. I want to tell you, saints, remain on course for the mission that God has purposed for you. It's important. Praise the Lord. Now, when the Samaritans rejected Jesus, do you know that doubts should have come because he was sent for the whole world? At least the Jews, in a certain way, were associating with him. He had some people that believed in him. But then he would have asked, how come beyond these, my people, how come other people do not welcome my message? Am I teaching the right message or am I teaching the wrong message? Because you would think that uh, because your message is right, so you think, then men ought to celebrate you. But it, they do not, we say they do not reject you because of wrong doctrine. No. Because they reject you because they cannot endure what is upon you. So do not doubt yourself in any way. Praise God. So Jesus did not doubt himself based on people's responses toward him. Of course, many, in many instances, he would ask his disciples, what do the people say that I, the son of man, am? But you realize when they say you are Elijah the prophet, you are such and such good names, major prophet, you are this excellent, most reverend, most right bishop. He is not moved by those. He asks them, you, who do you say that I? Am. And when he, when Peter acknowledges that he's the chosen one, Jesus the Christ, Jesus, that is a description, that is enough, chosen one. So he doesn't doubt himself. And when he realizes someone that has understood him for who he is, he's like, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the spirit of God. So he's like, okay, you've understood me as the chosen one. That is enough for me. Because when someone acknowledges that ah, this person is the chosen one, they, they are left with no choice but to partake of the chosen one. And so Jesus did not doubt himself. Many times people will doubt themselves because men have said bad things about them. Because someone has said, ah, okay, you are like this, so we can't be with you, and then you start being like, okay. I think this is not it. Have, have, have you been there and you even question yourself whether you were called. It is because you doubt yourself. That is usually based on people's reactions. So you sit back and you evaluate. What have people said? Okay, when people say, yes, our man, you're like, yeah. Those things, we can leave them for politicians. But as for us, we are not here to cause enticement and to cause impressions. Amen. So we are in verse 20, in, we were in verse 46 of uh, 24. Now I want us to go to chapter 26. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now let's start from verse 47.
And while he was speak, still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Next verse. Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one, sees him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. You know what Rabbi means? Great teacher, knowledgeable teacher, wonderful. This was a name specified for only the PhD holders of those days. So, in this case, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, comes and indeed he knows that Jesus is Rabbi. So what does he say? Greetings! Rabbi, and kissed him. Kiss was a sign of affection, sign of adoration, sign of honor, sign of respect, sign of love. But in this case, what was the kiss for? To identify him for crucifixion. And it was being done by a friend. Verse 50. But Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? So it means not all friends have to come. Praise God. Because some when they come, it is disaster. Some when they come, it is because they have come to identify others. So actually when someone comes, ask them, oh, thank you for coming. You are most welcome. Why are you here? It's not because you are trying to push them away. You want to understand their intentions. So when Jesus asks him, why have you come? He doesn't even say any other why. Because the plan had already been laid out. Praise God. So Jesus, all alone, yet with people. I don't know if you're getting this. Jesus, all alone, yet with people. See, Judas was there, cuddling him, kissing him, hugging him, praising him. Rabbi, greetings. That is someone that is worthy of bringing close. But he didn't pull back. He had the boldness to ask him, why have you come? Why have you come? What is your intention for coming? Let's read verse 50. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Verse 52, but Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it might happen thus? Jesus is showing <laughs> that you know what? If I was to exercise my authority, none of these would be able to even draw near me. But I know my purpose. So he tells him, how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that I would give life because of my death? How then would the scriptures be fulfilled that I will die and take upon myself their sins if you now try to take all these, my captors, by the sword. You know, many times, we do not give men an opportunity to have an experience by themselves. We clamp them immediately. We stop them immediately. But that is not how Jesus did. He let them keep roaming. Let them roam. 
R O A M. Leave them with their ears that they might hear. Because if you take away their sense of hearing, and yet they have not heard the truth yet, you have not helped them. Praise God. So Jesus is saying, don't you think I can exercise my authority? Don't you think I cannot pray to the Father now? Don't you think I can pray to the Father now? And he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels so they may take care of this situation. But if I do that, how then shall they receive life? How then shall you be saved? Because then, crucifixion will not happen. Sometimes, in the face of rejection, there is an opportunity for you to let them experience something that will draw them to Christ. On Thursday, when we were studying in our discipleship class, we said that without the law, I did not know sin. Because how, did, how would I know that covetousness is sin? Unless the law said you shall not covet. Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. We saw that. And then we saw in verse 24 of Galatians chapter 3. That now the law makes us aware that we need a savior. Sometimes the rejecters do not know that they need a savior. So you let them experience that they need a savior. But you do not condemn them. That is why you excuse yourself. You go to another village and you minister. When they realize that, oh, we needed that man, lakini tulimkata, watajileta wenyewe. Praise the Lord. That is the spirit that you are of. And so you learn this from the best man, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, in Luke chapter 9, he was set for Jerusalem. He passes by Samaria, the village of the Samaritans. They do not receive him. But despite the Samaritans' refusal to give Jesus audience, Jesus still had a fruitful earthly ministry. Because even us now, see we are here because Jesus, we have received him. But how far are we from the Samaritan village? So imagine Jesus had stopped there and is like, this is funny, this will be it. You see, my own people have rejected me. Now even the Samaritans have rejected me. It is wrong. God call others. Mimi ni mochoka. Kenyans. How would you hear the gospel if Jesus had said, take this cup from me? But then he remembered, oh, not as I wish. We are going to see there today before we finish. Not as I wish, but as you wish. Let your will be done. So despite the Samaritans refusing to give Jesus audience, still Jesus had a fruitful ministry. Let me tell you something, saints. Despite you not making it in that workplace, that is not the end. Because Jesus is not yet done with you in the sense of causing you excellence. So that setback, that rejection, that disappointment is not all. It is not all. Because God is the one with your say. Until he has said, that you are rejected, then you will accept all. But unless he says you are accepted. And he testifies in Ephesians chapter 1 that you are accepted in the beloved. So it means there cannot be any rejection, any rejection toward you. Praise God. Did Jesus have a fruitful ministry? Yes. That is why we are here. That is why we are preaching. But are there times when people rejected him? Yes. What did he do? He kept on going. So, beloved, keep on going. I usually tell us a story of when I was working for someone who thought I was slow. 
actually something that I didn't tell you when I was telling you that story is he would bully me because I didn't understand Swahili the way I know now. So it was very hard for me to communicate. So he would come with clients, very young people, many of them younger than you. And because as a staff, you have to honor clients, he would come with clients, very young, young ladies, around three of them. Then he, then he sits with them and then he calls me. And then I think it was an instruction. They just wanted to have fun. Kwa kunitumia mimi. So he would call me and they would speak to me in Swahili. Making orders that we don't even serve in that place. And so they would speak to me and I would see that they are just bullying me and mocking me. I would respectfully listen. And when you try, if I understand what they say in Swahili and I don't have the best Swahili phrases to give an answer, I try to speak in English. They command me to speak to them in Swahili. Then I make mistakes. They laugh. Those things will happen. It happened. It pained me. But I was giving service there. And the boss was there just looking at me, laughing together with them. Those times will come. The following day, I came back to work the happiest person. Like nothing had happened yesterday. But some of us, something happens. You at your workplace, there is a rejection that happens. And the following day, Sasa leo siendi, nataka nione watafanya aji. You are there to give service. Praise God. So Jesus is like, if I pray to my father to bring me over 12 legions of angels, will the purpose come to pass? Will it come to pass? So long story short, later on, now, because it was a family business, it was owned by the woman, the lady and the husband, the wife and the husband. So the and the and the and the business was going bankrupt. So the boss couldn't even face me. Sent one of them, who wanted now to have a promotion, and is the one who told me, you know, the boss is saying, now we shall call you when you when we need you. That is a polite way of saying we have fired you. But by the Spirit of God, I wanted to say some things, but I was, I was disciplined not to say the things I felt like saying at that time. The same way James and John were disciplined to first ask of Jesus, should we call down fire? Imagine if they had said, fire, come down. Because they were not telling Jesus to call down fire. They were like, tuna uwezo. Tutumia uwezo wetu. Na nguvu yetu kuachoma hawa kwa sababu wa mekukata. So I also felt the pain. I even looked at the eyes of my other co-workers. They were like, wa mekuonea tu lakini nisao. Over the next, I think, then the following week, I went back as a client. Very happily asked them, how is business going? How is work going? Three weeks later, they had closed business. They have never opened again. Now, I am not saying I celebrate that it did. But I thank God that none of my, their closure was not a result of words that I felt like saying at that time and I didn't say. Sometimes you might have a lot because of things that have happened and you want to to in a way because you know who you are. To be like, nataka ni waonyeshe tu kidogo. Nataka waonje tu kidogo hivi. Ili wanijue. See, you think mimi ni mtu wakawaida ju nime, nime, nime grow up na nini. You think I am the same person. Acha ni waonyeshe. Please do not show anyone. Do not try to show anyone. 
And so men that have grown up in a, in a life of revenge, do me, I do you. Do me this, I do you this one. When you make some decisions, they will think that is a revenge. They will think you are trying to retaliate. No, you're not doing that. You let them be. Praise God. So the Samaritans rejected Jesus. Even Judas Iscariot, one of his own, comes with beautiful words. Rabbi, greetings. Mwah. That is what people come with. They love you. But intentions are different and you will see it. Because when Jesus asked, friend, let's see verse 50. Friend, why have you come? Did he acknowledge Judas as a friend? Yes, because that is what he saw him as. But the friend didn't see how Jesus saw him. Many times, people reject you because they do not see you the way you see them. So Jesus asked him, friend, why have you come? Now, I want us to track back a little. Still in this verse, chapter 26, the book of Matthew. This time, let's start from verse 36. And this is what we shall end with for today. Verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Came with all his disciples. Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. If you're a Bible scholar, you will connect this with Luke 9, 55. Actually from 53. The two sons of Jeb Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Underline that. Jesus, on his purpose, what does he say? His soul is exceedingly sorrowful for the sin of the world. And the things that are just about to happen to him. So his soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. He asks of them. He requests of them. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face saying, Oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not watch with me one hour? When I was concluding the local church, I said time is a very good test of loyalty. Time is a very good test of loyalty. Jesus on a mission had to understand the hard way that he was in it alone. Because he comes back and is amazed, surprised. I thought we've been with you. I have told you my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. And I requested you painfully watch with me. But you could not even watch for one hour. Because immediately I left, you went into sleep. Immediately I left, you went into sleep. Let me tell you, in the face of rejection, it is important to understand 
that you have that call or that calling as an individual. The salvation you received is yours as an individual. So not everyone, no matter how long you've stayed with them, will be there in the time that you need them because God called you as an individual. Praise God. So you ought to know what manner of spirit you are of. Jesus comes back and is like, what? Verse 40. Could you not watch with me one hour? Verse 41. Didn't he, didn't that have to act as a wake-up call? That, okay, oh, Jesus is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. His soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. But when he went, he prayed, he even desired that the cup of suffering is taken away from him, but not as he wills, but the will of his father is done. He comes back and we've disappointed him. Let's pull up, let's pull up our socks. He does not end there. He asks them, couldn't you watch with me one hour? Verse 41. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He's saying, instruct your, 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 your flesh. To yield to the willingness of the spirit. Verse 42. Again. A second time. He went away and prayed. Saying. Oh my father. If this cup cannot pass away from me. Unless I drink it. Your will be done. Verse 43. And he came and found them asleep. Again. Because their eyes were heavy. Kwani yeye, hakuwa na usingizi. But he understood his purpose. He understood his purpose and he was like, mm -mm. no matter how much sleep I have, I have a purpose to accomplish. But because the other ones, the heaviness of eyes surpasses their knowledge of the purpose we have as a team, they can easily go to sleep. So he comes back, verse 43, and he found them asleep again because their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the same time, the third time, sorry, saying the same words. This must have been a serious issue to Jesus. He saw how big the challenge was, but he was like, I am ready. I am ready. Lord, because it is your will, I'll do your will. The rejection comes, but you're like, because it is the will of God, I will push on. I will not be discouraged. I will not let this setback set me back. I will keep on. Because I know that it is the will of God. So verse 44, he went again. He left them sleeping, went again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Verse 45. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Friends, Jesus, when we started in verse 36, he went with all his disciples. Then he continued with Peter and the sons of Zebedee. Father, he must have trusted them. He must have said, okay, if the other ones will be a little bit, will relax, will relax a little bit. I know these three will not relax. In any case, the sons of Zebedee earlier on, together with their mother, they had asked that one son sits on Jesus' left hand and another son sits on Jesus' right hand. He asked them, are you able to drink of the cup that I am going to drink of. They said, yes. Tell them you do not know what you are speaking about. 
And indeed, they realized. Because later on, when he just asks them to watch, not when, where he is, but where he had left them, he finds them sleeping. But let me tell you something. Even when his closest friends could not watch with him one hour, right now he has faithful in mil he has faithfuls in millions of them all over the world. And among them you are gathered here, watching and learning of him not relenting, saying, I will keep on. So Jesus did not give up. And that is why you are there. The closest might go, but you keep on. Because later on, 2,000 years later, you will see people that are saying, I am standing. Because the other man did not relent even when he was rejected. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, did they watch with him? No, they did not watch with him. When he needed them, did they come up? Did they show up? No, they did not show up. Many will not show up, but you keep on. Jesus kept on. He said, no, if it is your will, I will keep on. In the face of rejection, what is your reaction? Is it, I will quickly show them how I am? No, remember your purpose. You're not here to prove a point. Jesus was not there to prove a point. He was there to preach life. So you, the believer, you are there to preach life. And so I want to raise a, a, a people in Iwami Ministries that are there to preach life regardless of the rejection, regardless of the setbacks, regardless of the disappointments, regardless of the hurdles, because later on, whether rejected 20 years ago, later on you will see that there are products of your resilience. Praise God. And that is the nature of Jesus that we learn of him. Praise God. So are we believers in Christ Jesus? But didn't his closest let him suffer alone? They're like, ah, kwa kukula tuko na wewe, last supper kila mtu alikuwa hapo. Adi pita akauliza, eh, who wants to betray you now? Si, sisi tuko hapa, tuko na wewe. But when it comes to the exercise of tuko na wewe, we are together, I told you, that statement Say it when you mean it. We are together. When it comes to the exercise of we are together, you are together by yourself. But keep on. Keep on. In that business, someone has opened a business the same as yours, and it's making money, but yours is not making money. And you're like, no, I'll close. Why did the other one prosper in that business? You're like, I'll close. You know that business is working. But you're like, I'm going to close because people are not buying from me. Keep there. You, you've purposed. I want to study this and that is, this is what I want to be. Then you, you get, you get a retake and you're like, mm -mm. Let me go for an easier course. Who told you it was going to be easy? You know, some believers think that, you know, God is going to, you're going to watch there, like how you watch in movies, eh? That God is going to, at Arusha Pesa, you start seeing 1,000 words falling. And so many people have been deceived, eh? You go to church, and so they tell you, close your eyes, close your eyes. I am praying that God will surprise you with miracle money. Now check your bag. Kumbe ushers have been passing and they put money in the bag of one of the people they have already talked to. I tell you and I will repeat it. You are not poor. It is only that you have not made any investment. But if you had made an investment and it makes you money. I was speaking to one of our leaders the other day and they were telling me, yeah, I started a business and you know I made a hundred percent profit. That is the spirit. Of course, I continued sharing a few tips. But how will you see increase where you've not made an investment? 
so people want to be lied to, people want to be deceived. But you're not getting deceived. Say, I'm not getting deceived. Amen. Three of his best friends, closest friends, he took them away from the twelve, went further with them. He left them somewhere. It was like, I, in his mind, was like, I know you are the one that will understand. He didn't speak to all of them that my heart is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. No, he spoke to a few. Three of them Peter and the sons of Zebedee. They must have. He must have had an expectation of them that they would understand him. But when he comes back, because they are not going to die with him, he had to learn it the hard way. That ilikuwa yeye tu. Sina wengine. It was him alone. For him alone. And so when you understand that, you learn to be disciplined to remain. Because in future, you will see results of your labor. Isn't Jesus looking down on you now and saying, wow, this is the fruit of my not giving up when my heart was exceedingly sorrowful. He looks at you and is like, it was worth it. Even when Peter, the St. John slept, I thank God I didn't, I didn't sleep. Because right now I see. In your business, you'll be like, you know, now we thank God. I've told you about our story with my wife when we came, when we first came. Our friends went back. And when they were going back, they were more provided for than us. In any case, when they were saying we can't stay here, they were going back, we didn't have food. So they gave us the food that had remained and we stayed with that food. It pushed us for some days. And now many of you standing here or seated here would not know this word if we hadn't made up our minds to stay regardless of how hard life was. I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. I was sharing with, one, with one, a friend of mine back in Uganda and I was telling him how we were. I was like, hey, you know, for us, we thought it was like this. And, and the life that he was explaining, she, it was a she, the life that she was explaining, because that is what people expect. But you alone know the struggles, the challenges, the issues that you go through. And sometimes it's important to think and know that maybe there is someone that shares with you. That is why you see, Jesus in verse 40 comes back and is like, what? Couldn't you watch with me one hour? Let me tell you, it is you and you alone. So I pray for you that you learn to be disciplined. Learning from of Jesus. That in the face of rejection, you remember your purpose. That in the face of rejection, you remember your purpose. You will not invoke the coming forth of over 12 legions of angels. You will not be calling down fire. You will not be saying, okay, I give up. But you'll be saying, I purpose because I am better than giving up. I am better than giving up. I am not giving up. I am not giving up. Let us be on our feet. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because you have taught us to be knowledgeable and, Father, to remain on course for you in the face of rejection. Father, we understand that we are rejected because we have something good and people want something for themselves. But we are not giving people for themselves. We are giving them you. And so, Father, even in our businesses, we know the best for the market. And so we shall give the best for the market. So we thank you and we give you praise. Thank you for teaching us and thank you for loving us. We give you praise because of your love. And I pray, Lord, for these saints 
that if they thought they had been rejected in their relationships, Father, they will keep knowing and loving you, understanding that you work the best for them, that you have a purpose for them, that they will not give us on the purpose, they will not give up on the purpose that you have for them. And even in their businesses, that they will keep on knowing that the business that you've started in them is perfect in the name of Jesus. So I give you praise, Lord, because you love them. And thank you for the life that you speak. Even that we learn from of Jesus, his resilience, his purpose, the way he gave himself. And because he gave himself, then we are able to learn from of him forever and ever. Lord, we give you praise. And we are people that prosper in everything we do because we have learned that with time we shall bear the fruits and we shall look back on days of rejection. We shall look back on days of being left alone. We shall look back on days of, of hurdles and disappointments and we shall say, indeed Lord, you are Ebenezer. Thank you Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. If you believe that and you've learned something, join your hands and give the Lord praise. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now I want to give you an opportunity that has never received the life of God. Because it is Jesus that brings you into the fellowship. God brings you into the fellowship of his son Jesus that you may not experience rejection anymore. That even when it appears like there is rejection, you understand that you are for a higher purpose. If you want to receive the life of God and you be born again, I want to give you an opportunity right now that you may receive Christ. So if you are such a one, pray this prayer with me and you'll be born again. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. And thank you for teaching me that alone you have called me and in the face of rejection I run to you and I receive you. Now I want to acknowledge you Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I confess that you are Lord. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I receive you as my Lord and Savior to the glory of God I'm born again Amen now if you've just prayed that prayer you are born again we celebrate you and we ask that you contact us that we may help you to learn the life that you have received Amen you are blessed 